What's up guys? Thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah and you're tapped into Continue or Nah, which is a series I created where I let you know whether you should continue, meaning continue watching a series or check it out or add it on your, you know, we all got these lists, what I'm going to watch next list or put it on your Nah list, meaning mark it off and find something that was better to do. And in this um, video, we're going to be talking about the boy and the heron. It will pretty much be a non-spoiler uh, review of the movie. I saw it last Friday and I would like to share my thoughts. So let's get into it. So before we really get into it and I give you guys my thoughts, I would like to give a summary about the movie. So we know the movie was released, or if you didn't know, the movie was released last Friday on December the 8th. It is directed by Hayazo Miyazaki. It is two hours and four minutes long. So this is a summary. It says, Mahito, a young 12-year-old boy, struggles to um, struggles to settle in in a new town after his mother's death. However, when a talking heron informs Mahito that his mother is still alive, he enters an abandoned tower in search of her, which takes him to another world. So let's talk about the movie, you guys. So first off, the pros. I, visually, the movie was stunning. And but like we always know Studio Ghibli is going to step when it comes to visuals like the first four minutes of this movie I could not take my eyes off the screen like I was blown away like the the colors the sequence like I was like whoa and I, I like I said I was blown away like I was like mesmerized by it. the emotions that you were supposed to like, feel in those first four minutes like the way Mahito is feeling them you felt them like I was like whoa like they did an amazing job with that um the three entities I enjoyed the most in the movie was the main character which is Mahito the Heron and the grannies uh, or the maids per se to the um, stepmom. I enjoyed those three beings. Like, so let's talk about them. So Mahito. Mahito in the beginning, he weirded me out. And I'm not going to lie because when children are very in control of their emotions, they weird me out because I was like, that's not normal. Okay, you're supposed to have outbursts. And we see him have an outburst. And I think that when he had his outburst, that's when I was like, okay, he is a regular kid. But you have to realize that he's dealing with so much. And that's what I had to keep reminding myself. They're like, okay, he's 12. His mom just passed away. He's also living. Um, he's a child experiencing war. He just got a new stepmom. And they just moved him to another part of the country where he knows he doesn't know anyone. So he's not a bad kid, and he, but he's not an angelic kid either. He's like a kid that's in the middle that's teetering slightly on being bad because there is like, he, like, he, like I said, he has an outburst. And the reasoning for him to have that outburst, it made sense, but it's like, that was stupid. Like he made a permanent decision off of temporary feelings, but then it's like, okay, he's a 12 year old. It makes sense. But he was an enjoyable character. I think the aspects of his character that I liked the most was that he wasn't afraid of anyone or anything. Like if he was, he was going to stand up, he was going to stand up. And I enjoyed those types of characters. Um, then we have the hair on. My favorite part about him was the transition into looking like a regular hair on versus looking like the little stubby man that he was like that sequence of him going in and out of that form I thought was really cool and the reason why I thought it was cool because it wasn't a beautiful transition it was a very like it was weird it was weird but it was like oh that that would make sense the way that that would make a lot of sense that that would be the way you would transition out of that form into another form and then the last one, like I said, were the grannies. We get introduced to the maids of the stepmom. And it's like these, I think it's like six of them. Six or seven of them, I want to say. It has to be six or seven of them. But they're just these old ladies that work at the house that are the helpers. And I just, I really enjoyed their characters. Their, their character designs are very, like, cute. And I definitely see people dressing up as them during Halloween or at cons. There's probably going to be a lot of merch of them, especially them and the new like cute little 
chibi characters that they introduced like called the war we i think that's how you say them the little white characters if you've been seeing them in the promos a lot of people have been going up about them but those are the three things that i really like well the two things or the or the four things i enjoyed which would be the visuals um mahito the main character the heron and the grannies so the cons you guys dun 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 so for me, the cons for me is the reason why I kind of wanted to make this video, or not kind of, which is the reason why I made this video. So if you would ask me to continue or novice, this, I would say continue, but I would push it further down on my list. Like if you have other shows that you're more excited to watch that you feel like or that you know are gonna guarantee you a pleasurable experience, I would watch them first before going to spend money to watch this movie. Um, if I had to rate this movie on a scale of one to 10, I would give it a seven. It visually, it's, be it's breathtakingly beautiful. It's, it's a Miyazaki film, it's a Studio Ghibli film. Like, they put in work. But for some reason, the movie, not for some reason, I know the reason, but for me, the movie took a shift when Mahito enters the magical um, tower. Like, when he's outside of the tower, it, it just, I don't know. It feels like the story went all over the place once he entered the tower. There were things that I wanted to know more. I wanted to know more about the the tower master like they introduce this person and they give us a brief history about them but it's like we hear things about this person and i wanted to know like okay how did they choose this life of becoming the master of the tower the heron we had get little tidbits about how the people in the heron and how the people in the world view the heron like i wanted to know more about his species or about his people because it felt like in the movie he was the only one but they're like no there's other ones so i would love to i would love to hear more about him um there's these two groups in the in the tower one is like and they're both they both have the same starting point. They're both creatures that were brought into the tower, but they have two totally different life experiences in the tower. You have one group that is like barely scratching by in the tower and is like facing extinction. Like they're facing extinction. Then you have a, another group that was brought to the tower that is thriving and surviving and cultivating their own society. And I wish they would have explained why one was um, succeeding versus the other because they explain why the why the one group is not succeeding. But I'm like, this other group, it like they shouldn't be e they shouldn't be succeeding either if they're succeeding and maybe i lost that translation because like i said uh, or i don't think I, I mentioned i went and saw this movie in the sub version first and i want to see it in dubbed because maybe dubbed would make more sense to me but in the sub i was like y'all did not explain this more for me it just felt like once Mahito in entered the tower, like it was so many things going on at once where I was just kind of like, explain this more, please. And then there's supposed to be like this huge revelation in the story, but it's like, you clearly know who this person is. And I don't know if that is because like this movie is geared towards teenagers where they wouldn't pick it up. But as an adult, you off rip know who that person is just by the interaction that Mahito and this person has. And I wish they would have flushed that out more. Now, does this even crack my top four Studio Ghibli movies? No, because it could never, okay? And my top four is Spirited Away, Porky Rosso, uh, My Neighbor Totoro, and um, Arietti. Those four movies I can watch on repeat and quote. I can quote all of them and not be irritated or annoyed or tired of them. And this movie doesn't do it. Now, is it horrible? No, it is no, um, what's the name of it? It is no Earwig and the Witch. Because that movie was trash. <laughs> that movie, 
that movie wasted my time. But this was a decent movie, a 7 out of 10. And like I said, if you want to go see it, I would definitely go see it um, during a matinee. If you have a showing at like 11, you'll be out around 1. You could go get lunch with your friends or you could do a solo date by yourself. But I wouldn't waste time going to see the movie like I did. I saw the movie at 9, 10 at night. And I enjoyed the movie, but I was like, I definitely could have waited until the next day and saw the movie at like 10 o'clock and been fine. But yeah, y'all, those are my thoughts. So please hop down in the comments below and give me your thoughts. Let me know if you like the movie. What are your top Studio Ghibli films? Do you have any pros or any cons? And as always, remember to be bravely authentic. Like, comment, and subscribe. Deuces. Oh, 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 oh,